example is um, taking the possibility of factoring a polynomial and going backwards with it. We're starting here with the roots instead of trying to find them. And we're trying to go backwards to find a possible polynomial off by maybe a, a product of a coefficient or a product of a constant. So here we're given that there's two roots, negative two and uh, one plus three i. Uh, the problem here is this polynomial has real coefficients and it has a degree of three. Well, if it has a degree of three, it should have three roots. And if it has real coefficients, you can't just have one plus three i as one of the roots. So the third root is its conjugate. It's called the uh, uh, conjugate root of one plus three i is one minus three i, and that's the complex root theorem, that if you have one, you have to have the other. When we set up these roots, we have to make sure that we set it up in such a way that it's always x minus whatever uh, the root is. So the first one is going to be uh, x minus a negative two, and I'm gonna write it out explicitly. Of course, you can change it to x plus two, but it helps me write the second two out, which would be x minus uh, one plus three i, and x minus one minus three i. And I'm not gonna distribute the negatives because I'm gonna use a neat little trick to help me multiply these last two factors together. And that trick is to rewrite them as uh, let a equal one plus three i, and let b equal one minus three i. So I can rewrite those two as x minus a times x minus b. And then just multiply that together to see what I do with these complex uh, roots. So we're gonna go x times x is x squared. Uh, we're gonna go negative a times x is negative ax. Uh, x times negative b is negative bx and negative a times negative b is positive ab. And then I'm gonna just uh, factor out two things in the middle here, a minus and uh, the x. And I'm gonna do it in such a way that I pull the minus to the front and the x to the back. That's legal because uh, multiplication is commutative. And I can move it one way or the other, it doesn't matter. So I decided to split one to the front, one to the back. And then what's left in here is a plus b. So if I want to find the product of these two uh, binomials, uh, ugly as they are, they're still called binomials, all I have to do is find the sum of my two complex numbers and the product of my two complex numbers and just substitute the answers into those two locations. So first off, let's find a plus b. Uh, a is one plus three i. B is uh, 1 minus 3i, and if you add those together, the 3i's are just going to cancel and you're just going to be left with 1 plus 1, better known as 2. All right, and then if we do a times b, it would be 1 plus 3i times 1 minus 3i. And since they're conjugates, the product of the middle is gonna cancel the positive 3i and the negative 3i. So all we're gonna get is one times one is one. Negative three i times positive, or I'm sorry, positive three i times negative three i is a negative nine i squared. But i squared just changes the sign of the number. So this is one plus nine, better known as 10. So when I come back to the problem, I can rewrite it as x plus two times x squared minus a plus b. And a plus b was just so we're going to get 2x plus a times b, which was 10. And then we just have to multiply the rest of this out. So we're going to get x cubed um, minus 2x squared uh, plus 10x plus 2x squared. Isn't that interesting? Uh, minus 4x and a plus 20. So altogether, the possible polynomial that has these roots would be x cubed plus 6x plus 20. Maybe off by a multiple, like if you multiply everything by two or multiply everything by negative one third, but this would be the base polynomial that has these roots. And I'm gonna call this p of x as a function. And that's it.